Hello everybody, welcome. Good afternoon, I should say. <laughs> yes, it is five past four. Wednesday, no, Thursday. Thursday the, I don't know, 10th or 11th of November. Anyway, no worries. Um, yeah, I'm here in front of the kiln because, yeah, you know, I've got to the point where we have a lot of pots in the studio and uh, so I want to get some of them, get them into the into the kiln here, into the bisque firing. So that's what I'm doing. <laughs> no great shit, but that's it. That's life, isn't it? We have to get to get the stuff through the kiln, and there's a lot of routine stuff involved in being a potter, isn't there? Not just the making, but there's all these other all these other things that perhaps members of the public they don't really understand what being a potter really, it, all of the different processes that are involved, do they? But um, it's nice to be able to share with people, isn't it? A little bit about some of the background stuff that we we do need to do. And um, packing a bisque kiln is not exactly very glamorous, is it? <laughs> but it's something that needs to be done. I actually, I, I get a lot of satisfaction from packing a kiln, you know, from getting all your stuff that you've carefully made and it's now bone dry and that is that is so important isn't it that we make sure that everything is absolutely bone dry and it's worth it's worth making sure that things are bone dry and not cutting corners you know otherwise we have as I had in my last bisque firing I had something blow up <laughs> I had some of those, I don't know if I've showed them to you, they were just these, they're rather thick. I was going to bisque fire these and then I was going to put clay slops in them. So it's the bisque sucked out the, a bit like putting clay into, uh, on plaster, on, onto plaster bats. Well bisque in just the same way is absorbent, isn't it? Just like plaster. The, the good thing is of course that bisque where you haven't got the danger of plaster getting mixed up in your clay in your studio which can happen so that was why I was making these and you know what I was absolutely certain that they were dry but these I know are dry because I've actually had them on top of the last firing these ones that didn't go in I, so they were all through the firing on the top so I know that I know that they are dry but in actual fact, I don't have any in this firing. Anyway, let me just show you what I'm doing. Just incline the camera down here, and we'll just talk about what's going on. As you can see, I've just about got to the end of packing it. Just a couple of things, one, one thing to mention. Um, along the top of my, the kiln here, on top of the, the brick, I've got a layer of ceramic fiber. Now you'll notice I've got these cloths here over the edge. That's to help protect the edge here because constant leaning in the edge is vulnerable and the, carb the, the, the ceramic fiber gets chaffed and I've got a couple of towels, one on either side here, which are to protect that because apart from the, the, the ceramic fiber being chaffed and then wearing and what does happen is that every time you chaff it the ceramic fibre particles are released into the air and you're right over them here breathing them in so it's really not a good idea so that's why I do that to protect the ceramic fibre but also to protect my lungs so <laughs> um, I don't know if you can see that, it's a little laser. As you can see here, um, in the centre here I've got uh, a stack of bowls of pouring, those pouring bowls you saw me do just, just recently, these fellas. They are actually 
if you can see there, they've got sand in the base and that goes all the way down through. And that, that means that the weight is taken there. Um, what else? Yeah, as you can see, I've, I've got pestles and mortars in here. Well, the, pest, the pestles are just in these mugs here. Um, over here, on the far right side there, I hope you can see that over there. I don't know if that's showing that laser. I thought I was being clever having a laser, but I don't know if it shows up, but anyway. Over here, you can see on the right side, down here, I've got these guys, all right, I'm just upending them, all right. That's the nice thing about bisque, you haven't got to put everything necessarily, necessarily flat, although I perhaps would not put plates uh, upend like that. Having said that, I think I have them in the past. Um, so I've just got a few more to put in here. Let's see, I've got these. So that is a stack of pestles and mort the mortars you see are just put face to face like that. They're fairly rugged. Although I do do this, occasionally you do have a casualty and one down below gets cracked. But that's just, that's just the way it is. I've got this little pot, which we, I think he'll go there quite nicely. What you need to bear in mind when you're packing a bisque is um, weight, um, weight distribution. Weight distribution of your pots, how you're packing them one on top, like this here you see, is a stack of mugs. Well, these just go on top of the, each other like that. Well, they could go like that, um, but I tend to put them that way around. And, and they pack very satisfactorily in that manner. So there's that. Um, scanning around the room to see Here's a little dish. Things like that can, can go upside down, upside down on there. What you have to make sure is, of course, that when, when the lid comes down, we've got clearance and we're not going to, you know, that any of these pots are sticking up, as it were, proud of the lid, where the lid goes flat across, right across here. So you need to make sure. Um, I've got some room there. I've got a bit of height there. Um, so I'm scanning around the room to see what we've got. I spy with my little light up there on those shelves, I think. Ah, yes. Yes, indeed. Indeed, indeed. Well, there you go. Maybe a couple of those guys. La, la, la. So we've got a few. There's surprisingly always something that you can. Always seem to find. So let's have a look. I found these these smaller um, double bowls. Yeah, that would go there. I've also got these guys. These are, they're like GP bowls. Did I show you these? But they're kind of squished. And then we put a little, little handles, you see? Little cutout handles. I thought they would be quite fun. Um, let's see, I can probably put these over here. Something like that. 
probably go there. I've got another one there. I'll probably get him over there. See, with with bit with bisque packing, you can pack and then lean one thing against another and something against something else. You sort of straddle things, you know. And um, I've got here. And here I've got two space. Oh look, I've got I've got lots of pest mortars, but mortars are quite heavy, and I'm not sure by putting it there. It's a good idea. Let's have a look. Maybe that one could go upside down on top of there. No. Da, 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 I'd rather put something light there and there. These pestles, uh, mortars are heavy. Maybe that can go there. Yeah, that Oh, I see, I've got some... Well, oh, look at that. What can do with that? Da, da, da. De, de. I didn't show you this, did I? This is uh, three GP bowls stuck together. Again, with little, with little handles on the end there. I wonder. Ho ho ho, look at that. That'll do. That'll do. So I need something for there. Got some little... Bowls. Oh, yes. Entirely happy with that. Something is kind of rocking. You know, sometimes pots they they rock a bit, don't they? Sometimes it's worth just making sure that they're sitting. It does go there, but I'm a little, little bit. Oh, that's a better. Oh, so, where can I put this fella? Okay, like that. Yeah. All right. All right. I think that's as far as I want to go with it, actually. We've got a good amount of work in there now. So, it's surprising, isn't it, how much, how much work you can get into a small space. 
especially if you're packing a disc. Of course, the glaze firing is a different story, isn't it? <laughs> With all the glaze on it, nothing can be touching. Well, I think we may fire this tomorrow. Good. Um, yeah, we have a workshop here, November 19th and 20th. Go to my website, simonleachpottery.com. We've also got there on the tools page, on the tools page, or I don't know if it's online shop or gallery or something like that, but there are some pottery tools. And we are offering a selection of tools. There's five, five tools, a paddle, a throwing stick, which you can have with your name on, a sponge stick, a, uh, a net tool and two chamois leathers. We're offering them at a special price if you buy the lot together instead of individually. That'll help you practice. <laughs> help you keep on practicing. Okay folks, well, the weather's closing in. It was actually snowing here earlier on. So we're gonna keep warm. All right. See ya. Keep practicing. Bye-bye now.